What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my review in progress of Wild Hearts. Now, a lot of people have been curious about this game. I was extremely curious myself because they didn't decide to do a demo. Uh, but today, I'm going to be talking about my impressions so far after playing the game for roughly 20 hours. Uh, this is very much a review in progress. I have not pushed past the second zone of the game because I wanted to save my experience for stream. Uh, so a lot of this is just going to be my impressions based on kind of a lot of the core mechanics of the game. The hunting, the Karakuri, uh, the, the current kimono I've encountered so far, and just how I feel about it in general. So uh, let's jump into it. Right up front, a couple things here. Like I said, not past Chapter 2, so you're going to see some pretty early monsters. Uh, this is going to be fairly informal. We're not allowed to do full reviews until uh, official launch on Thursday, but we're allowed to, to do reviews in progress and obviously show off a tons of footage. No late game stuff is going to be shown here. Uh, as mentioned, this is only on Chapter 2, so still relatively early. And all of the footage you're seeing is on PC. Uh, everything's set to max. This is pretty much a, a max tier rig. I just got my new rig, so you know we're, we're running on a 13900KS and a 4090. So obviously everything is going to look absolutely phenomenal. Frames are going to be great. Uh, but I think it's important to mention that because I don't think that is going to be indicative of all the PC's experience. You know, when, when you have a absolute monster of a computer, if your PC doesn't run smooth, you know, there's bigger issues with the game. But I don't know how well this is going to run on lower end rigs or on consoles, and I do want to be upfront about that. Uh, but jumping on in, talking about the game, uh, right up front, I'll say it, I'm having a ton of fun. Uh, I think that Monster Hunter finally has some actual competition with this game, and I am having a lot of fun with it. It is incredibly fresh. It's, I mean, honestly, you know, after going from World and then hopping back and experiencing GU and then going to Rise, I've done a lot of Monster Hunter lately, and I honestly enjoy it. I'm a huge fan of Monster Hunter, uh, and this makes some really good changes on the formula that I think people are going to be really, really welcoming of. As much as people like to joke, like, oh, it's Monster Hunter meets Fortnite. You know, you just saw me use a wind thing to get up and then a glider to hop on over here and clear this entire cliff. Um... The Monster Hunter meets Fortnite comparison, it is it is strangely apt because the the building that we're able to do to traverse the world is actually really cool. Uh, and one of the things that I really like is just how incredibly explorable the worlds are. Um, I think a good comparison here is when Monster Hunter went from world to rise and we saw that change in, you know, verticality, being able to climb up on top of everything and explore literally anywhere you want to go that's not like out of the bounds of the level. This feels like that. This feels like we have the verticality of rise, but in a world that has the scope of, uh, of Monster Hunter world. So, obviously, I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons to Monster Hunter here. I think that that is what this game needs to stack up against. And so I just want that clear up front. You know, if I'm making comparisons, that's why. Uh, but the the world is very fun to explore. Uh, there are multiple different biomes looking at the main map. Uh, this is the, the first one, however, see me way. Over here was the second. This was like a island type fishing zone. Uh, and then over here is the third zone. And there's even more. But like I said, I want to save all this for stream, so I haven't even explored into it. I'm pretty sure this is like the fall zone. This one's like winter, and then I think there's like a, a, a you know, a big hub. Uh, but we have lots of different things in this game which we can use to traverse across the map. And these Dragon Karakuri, they're considered permanent installations, so they will just persist on the map until we destroy them. Uh, so, like, as you can see, you know, there's just... There's just zip lines all over the place, and in a sense, it's it's kind of reminiscent of something like the forest, you know? I just, I have trails going all over the map to places that I want to go, and you can obviously, you can use these back and forth. So, making your own pathways around the map, placing camps, making your own uh, fast travel points around the map, it is a very, very interesting system, and one that I think is super cool. So, like, over here, this thing, this is a, a paddle. And what it does is it's just going to cruise around this lake and it's going to capture fish for me that I can cook. And I can just come in and I can check on it and I can get some more fish. So the game does a, a very good job of making you feel, I guess, it, it makes you embrace the world. And the world does feel very alive. Um, but at the same time, I think the biggest thing is the Karakuri. These are like semi-permanent. So, so stuff like this. This is going to be a healing well. Uh, stuff like the fish thing or the tower. Those are what's known as Dragon Karakuri. These are considered permanent installations. Either I destroy them or they persist. Uh, and then we have the basic Karakuri, like these crates right here. These are semi-permanent. Either I destroy them or a monster destroys them. But they are very, very easy ways to just create like 
small shortcuts around the map to get stuff. Uh, I think the one of the best examples is just right back here at the base travel. Uh, so I just have two boxes, and what's cool is these are just they're 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 very intuitive. You just run them. So I don't need. I'm just running right now, not pressing anything else. And that was just one fluid motion. That was holding forward. I didn't have to jump. I didn't have to press anything to climb. I just ran up the boxes and I launched. Uh, and not only are they used to to kind of travel around, they're also used in combat in the world. So all of these should be considered extensions of how you play. So like the springboard, these are used for dodges, but you also have a dodge attack that goes off of them. For example, the crates over here, they can be used to get plunging attacks. And with the, the Karakuri Katana, at least it varies. So a regular one, you know, quick plunging attack. If I go off the triple stack, you can see longer draw, and then actually the ground shatters. Uh, so, you know, stuff like the, the lantern, it's going to enchant me. If I were to, to use the, the glider you just saw, I can come down from that with a spin the wind. And so, not only are these meant to like traverse the environment and make shortcuts and whatnot, they are also very much an extension of your hunt, allowing you to expand upon your combat abilities. Uh, in a sense, not, not too much unlike how the uh how the wire bugs kind of brought a whole new element to monster hunter compared to rise uh and and so very very comparable feeling here i think i like these even more than the wire bugs though because it's not just like you know you got your three bugs make it count it's you know you you're doing all sorts of stuff as you go around uh in this environment and so it's a really really unique mechanic but one that i think they pulled off uh, incredibly well so moving on from there, let's actually talk about the, the weapons, because I think one of the most important questions in a hunting game is, you know, how are the weapons? What are the weapons like? Are they good? Are they fun? Uh, and I think they did do a really good job with the, the weapons here. So all of the weapons have a, uh, a gauge, essentially, where you're going to build up that gauge to empower the weapon. And what I like about this is they all have an identity, similar to how they do in Monster Hunter, uh, but the... For example, with the Karakuri Katana, we can enhance it, and then when we enhance it, it then it goes into like a whip sword type state, so we're getting all sorts of bonus attacks with it. And that's also going to empower attacks in general, so for example, doing the, the triple tower, you can see a big old hit there uh, by the same thing if I end up, you know, sheathing that, and I unempower it, you know, still a big hit but not gonna be as, as heavy as Katana was. Uh, in a similar fashion, if we go on over to the, uh, let's change equipment here. We'll go to something like the Maul. Uh, the Maul's whole gimmick is you need to have specific timed attacks to extend the Maul and generate a longer handle on it. So as opposed to, to like a max weapon gauge, this one doesn't necessarily have a gauge, it's gonna be how it attacks. So, you know, we start off with a bonk, extend, bonk, extend. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and we can do even even more than that, you know, going into the, the Y stance, for example, here's some other stuff, so. I'm going to do a spin to win, and if I do this all the way until I'm out of stamina, it'll end up going into a, a big old, you know, mm -hmm. final big smash. Um, but most of the weapons that the Maw is actually, I think, the only one I can think of that doesn't have a gauge we need to work around. Well, I guess the bow doesn't have a gauge either. Uh, but all the weapons have some kind of unique gimmick in how they play, uh, just to, to briefly talk on them. So the Katana, we build up a gauge that then empowers it. The Nodachi, we build up a gauge that unleashes a super heavy attack, similar to like a true charge slash. Uh, the bow, as opposed to having a gauge, we have two different arrow types where we basically put arrows in and then we make them explode with a piercing shot. The maul extends, the blade of a gossip parries, and as we parry, we build up this gauge that allows more damage. Uh, the cannon charges all the way up to a mega laser. The blade and claw allows us to hook a claw into the monster, and for the duration of our gauge, we become attack on titan. And then the Karakuri staff transforms into a my giant gigachad greatsword that'll actually just do massive damage. Uh, but so... To build up these gauges, it's all about like a specific gimmick with how you play the weapon. And I do like that a lot because there's a couple weapons we we have that in Monster Hunter, you know. I think uh the the charge blade and the switch axe are, are probably the best examples, and those are two of my favorite weapons in Monster Hunter. But kind of how the charge blade is all about, you know, charge your files, charge your shield. Uh, and the switch axe is charge on up and then go into sword mode. Most of the weapons in this game have some type of charge up mechanic. They have something that you're you're building towards with them. And that's something that I really like. I think it makes the hunts even more entertaining 
uh, than, than they would typically be. Uh, yeah, sure, let's pick this up. Look at that, boom. Um, on the note of weapons, another thing which I really like, which you just kind of saw right there, weapons are like build your own. So for example, with the, the Nodachi, it starts with no skills. Here, I got the inherited skill of Savage, inherited skills I can bring along. Here, there was nothing. Here, I brought my Savage down. So now it has a new inherent in Final Blow, and it has Strong Arm Spirit and Savage. But with the Wagasa, for example, I wanted those and Parry Master. So I started here, went over to the right for Crit Master, went over to the left for Savage, carry them both over here. There's two slots so I could pull them. Went down here, there's three slots so I could still pull those two. Went over to here, didn't bring Strong Arm Spirit, kept my original two, hopped over to here, and then went over to here. So then I had the inherent of Crit Buse Fury, but I also had Dodge, Savage, and Crit Master. And so we're able to work weapons around the tree uh, and really kind of customize our weapon. You know, I could go down, down, and then over, and then here, and then hop back for a perk, and then go here for Poison Wielder temporarily. Um, inherent skills won't come, but the fog fall would. And then I go here, and then 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 shoot over, and then I have my final ultimate weapon that I have snaked around this entire tree. So the, the build your own weapon system is something that's incredibly appealing to me, especially because if I just go here, 350 gold, and I get back all the materials and I can just build something new. And as you can see, I have 20,000 gold. So that's like, it's nothing. Uh, so there is a, a insane level of weapon flexibility here. And I'm really, really happy about that because it's going to promote uh, build variety. It's going to promote you testing out things and finding what works. And that's that's just that's super, super cool to me. I like that a lot. Uh, as for the equipment, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So we obviously have our weapon here. We have talismans. You can have up to five talismans. Each of them has an associated cost and you can stack up to 50. This is kind of like a, a, a build your own necklace type deal from Monster Hunter where you're pulling from certain skills that you want. Uh, the armor is pretty straightforward. Armor will have skills on it. And then there are paths the armor can go down. So I think one of the best examples is these boots right here. Um, look at the rightmost column the left column is is my current but the rightmost you can see right below the defense there's a little symbol and there's currently nothing there if i go to human path it's going to give me 70 affinity towards the human path modification if i go kimono it's going to give me 70 affinity towards the pure kimono path and I'll get different perks depending on the path. If I end up pure kimono, I get resurrection. If I end up pure human, I get strong swimmer. And so the idea here is as you're building your armor, you're you're basically moving towards certain paths to gain certain perks, which is a really interesting system. Uh, as far as I can tell, we don't have to upgrade our armor at all. I would guess that late game, there's probably gonna be some type of upgrade system or something that, that pulls it up because if you just look at the first number, you know, that's our defense and we're going from like one, seven, eight, 10, nine, 11, uh, 15, 20. So, you know, as we progressively hunt, certain armors are getting better and better. And as far as I can tell, I can't find a way to upgrade it yet. But as I said, review in progress, we're still fairly early. Uh, but so the, the equipment system is all pretty straightforward. Over here, this adorable little guy, that is, uh, that's the equivalent of our companion or our palico in the game, the Sukomo. Cool little thing. We can go here and we can enhance it so we can make it heal, give us more thread, taunt the monster, attack the monster, make all sorts of customizations on it. Uh, and you enhance them by just finding more out in the wild, like little Kodamas, which is pretty neat. Uh, some other stuff to, to talk about briefly. So in general, I really do like the world. We can we can hop on over. I'll show off a little bit of the, the second zone, Natsu Sudachi Isle. Let's go to the seashore camp. Uh, but the world does feel, feel very alive. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of like, just little the guys that you can discover. Also smaller kimono and larger kimono. Uh, the biomes, at least the two that I experienced, were incredibly diverse. You can see immediately this one is a whole island setting. Um, and, and, you know, what I like about them is not only are the maps nice, but like I keep going back to this, the Karakuri. The Karakuri promotes so much exploration. So perfect example is this one, you know, this, this is a whole ass cliff face right here. But it's like, I don't feel like running all the way around. So what did I do? Created a dragon Karakuri. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to fly this guy up as high as it'll let me fly. And then I'm going to hit my glider to shoot on over here. And then I'm going to fly this one up all the way that I can. Oh, no, I don't have the car curry for it. Oh, no. I don't know if I'll be able to get up. Uh, let me see. I still am. That's amazing. 
Uh, but so this is like this is exactly what I was talking about when I said like the verticality in this game is just insane. Like honestly, there's there's it's I think the comparison of Rise's verticality in a world like game is is accurate. It's, it's I just climbed all the way up here. I'm all the way up on this thing. And then, you know, if I if I, I don't have the resources, uh, but if I wanted if I had the resources available, I could put a fast travel camp up here. Put a fast travel camp and I'm like, you know, right in the middle of here or, or better yet, put it up there at the very top and then be like, which way is the monster? I'm going whichever way it is. I'm going to glide on down to it. Uh, and that that level of freedom is something that I, I really, really like. I can't stress enough just how much I'm like, this is super cool. This is this is definitely one of the, the coolest things I've experienced uh, in a hunting type game. So. Uh, with all that being said, let's actually talk about the hunts. We're gonna do, let's just do a basic hunt and I'll talk about it. Uh, so we're gonna go, we'll just go after the Rage Tail. This is like the first monster of the game. You know, keep things, keep things uh, relatively spoiler free here. Uh, but the hunting is good. However, uh, there are some camera issues that are, are kind of janky at times. And it's especially apparent when you're being like knocked back or attacked by the monster. So. The, the actual flow of the hunt is fairly simple. We're going to use this tower to search for the kimono. I can see that the kimono is over there, you know, uh, 280 meters out. And you'll see that we can actually see a... Uh, actually, hang on, I'm going to get uh, get some trees before we go. I need to load up on my Karakuri thread. Uh, and you can typically, once you're fighting, you don't need to do this, but if you want to load up, just hitting one tree or boulder that has that will immediately load you on up on a ton of thread. Um, but... It's kind of interesting, I guess you could, could say it's almost an accessibility type thing, but we have uh, outlines of monsters that have been uncovered with that tower. So as long as the towers are active, we're able to see where the monster is. And as soon as it comes into our line of vision, uh, we'll, we'll end up, you know, we'll lose that outline and we'll actually see the, the kimono itself. Um, and I don't know how I feel about it, because on one hand it is a little, like, it's, it's slightly immersion breaking, being like, well, I see it, it's right there, but, you know, is it... Which way do I do I go around this cave to get to it, or what do I do? Um, on the other, you know, with this much verticality, it is nice to know exactly where something is, uh, and it's it's done really well. So as you can see, like if I'm sitting here, like yeah, you can see the the coloration change is is very very apparent. Uh, so actually going into the hunt itself, uh, I think the biggest thing people are gonna have to get used to is using the basic Karakuri as kind of like extensions of the, the hunt. These are, these are very much meant to be like extensions of your hunter, you know? Using stuff like the springboards to get out of the way, using stuff like the torch to, to constantly uh, amplify your weapon with some extra fire damage. And, you know, it's, it's very different from a typical hunt game. But if I go over here, I'm just gonna let this thing hit me a few times here. Uh, we do have a, a, a slight lock on, but when we get hit, uh, that was a weak attack. I needed to, to send me flying. When you get hit, there's some some camera issues at times that I think become quite apparent. If this thing can actually get off the hit before I, I play it. I'm just going to attack it with Reckless of Banner and hopefully I get kicked away. Um, as you damage the monster, you are going to expose parts like that one I have right there. Uh, those are, they're not necessarily weak points but they let you jump on the monster and extract a large amount of thread using something called Hunter's Arm. So we do this, you can see I'm at 16 thread, now I'm at 32. Strong Arm Spirit has then been activated, I have a special effect, and that's going to increase the amount of, uh, of talismans that I get from this hunt, which is really cool. So I'm getting more loot out of this, I'm temporarily bolstering my capabilities to use stuff as well. Uh, and it's, it's, it's you know, just an extra mechanic in the hunt. Uh, besides that, we also have like fusion Karakuri, which we can work in. So if the monster is planning a big attack, I have fusions up on the top uh, right there. Boom, boom, boom. Three of those, I'm going to create a big old hammer that'll then pound the monster, do some damage, potentially KO it. Uh, and even while you're hunting, you know, the, the verticality doesn't change. I'm just running around the map chasing this thing, seeing wherever it's going to go. But the biggest thing that I think is going to throw people off, at least initially, is the camera. Um, and I know I, I said that before, but you're, this, this is going to be the perfect example of why the camera tends to be jank at times. So in large open world areas, I think it's fine. You're, you're not going to have any issues with the camera. But once you start getting in tight spaces, uh, like in this building, all of a sudden the camera, it's, you know, we have the, the outline like ourselves, which we have something like that in Monster Hunter. But we get thrown around a lot, and when the camera backs up to us, kind of like how we're like right here, 
you know, you can kind of see a little bit of it happening right now. You end up with this just kind of hard to see type thing where you're like, man, I need to, I need to not, not fight this thing in, in a tight space at all. So I end up trying to pull uh, all of my hunts out into the open because of exactly that reason. But it, it definitely took some getting used to. And I think one of the things I noticed is that the, the monsters in general in this game, they really like to do like flashy ass attacks that are going to knock you massive distances. So, you know, just that, the, 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 the uh, amount of flashiness right now is, like, you can barely see what's even happening. Unga Bunga Sword! I like that thing a lot. Uh, but it does take some getting used to, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta really kind of, I don't know, take, take, pick and choose your fights where you want them to be. Uh, but the overall flow of the hunt is actually pretty simple, where in general most fights are going to go through three phases. We're going to have an opening phase, which you saw. Uh, the second phase, the monster is going to retreat somewhere, you're going to fight it. And then after that, it's going to run back to its base while injured, uh, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. So, we're just using uh, the crates to get on up. Let's see just how fluid the environmental traversal is. By far my favorite thing about this game. You're just you know, running around doing whatever you want. Okay, give it the big ball. You can see when you when you're hit. Um, it's almost always big reactions as well. I notice, you know, in Monster Hunter, not everything is going to be a, a huge, huge reaction. Uh, but for the most part, that is the case here. And that large sound cue, that signifies that you've, you've depleted the monster's health. And then you go into a, a final blow type scenario. Very uh, Kawasawa-esque, you know. We have the, the black and white, the, the final attack that ends up killing it. You bow afterwards for a respectful hunt. You get all of your rewards after taking it out. And so that's the general flow of the hunt. Uh, keep in mind, the hunts aren't all this fast. This is like a, uh, a tier 2 weapon versus a tier 1 monster, so I'm obviously obliterating it. And then after that 30-second window, we go back to camp or town. Uh, if I had, like, cut the the uh, bulb off its tail, I'd be able to just hold left trigger and loot that separately. Uh, but otherwise, when you when you defeat the monster, you're automatically going to get all the mats. So the, the hunt itself, I, I do like the hunts, especially because I think the weapons are smooth. Uh, but I think the camera is, is something that, it's, it's hard to say, I don't want to say it's a weak point, because I think it's, it's by design, I don't know if we could have the freedom of exploration that this world has without the camera being a little bit janky, uh, but in all my time playing, if there was one thing that stood out to me where I was like, this is the weak point, I would definitely say it would be the camera when you're being knocked back in hunts and kind of flung around. Um, but even then, I mean, I've had a blast hunting. Like I said, I have about uh, 20 hours in, and I'm still in the first two zones just because I didn't want to spoil myself. I wanted to save it for stream, uh, but, you know, I, I couldn't stop playing. I've been having so much fun with this. So uh, we can't give final scored verdicts until Thursday, uh, but um, based on what I've experienced so far, Monster Hunter absolutely has competition. Uh, this is this is a really really fun game. Uh, I was really concerned about this because they didn't do a demo, and I know Monster Hunter fans tend to be ruthless. And I was like, man, no demo. You know, even though EA's the developer, just EA's name being attached to it, obviously people are like, rah rah, EA bad. Um, despite the fact that EA's actually been on like a pretty good streak lately with like you know single player games and whatnot. So um, I don't know. We'll see if that sentiment changes. Uh, but at least based on the the uh, press PDF they gave us, a couple things that I want to add here. Uh, they said that March and April, there's free content updates planned, uh, subspecies and deeply volatile kimono. So, you know, very much following kind of that, that Monster Hunter playbook, uh, weapon variations, armor variations, new Karakuri, uh, weapon and equipment enhanced system. I think that's going to be the upgrade stuff, quests and more high difficulty quests, miscellaneous bug fixes. And most importantly, a little thing here, they said to us, uh, players' adventures in Azuma are not over when the credits roll. Wild Hearts will be receiving free post-launch content, including new kimono and more. We do not have plans to feature MTX. Now, whether or not that holds true to the test of time, that's something that remains to be seen. 
but I want it upfront known that in the review guides they sent us that details, you know, stuff like, you know, do this, do this, make sure to check out this. Uh, they explicitly state that there are no plans to feature microtransactions. And I also want to add that this game is launching with crossplay between Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Now, I haven't had a chance to test the crossplay features myself, but I'm going to say this. Um, if they stay true to content updates, no micros, and crossplay, man, Capcom's gonna get a fire lit right under its ass because right now people have been eating up Capcom for the lack of crossplay and the the uh, excessive micros they're really starting to put into the games. Even though they're mostly cosmetic, still they're they're going into the micro heavy territory, and it seems the the fan base is not a fan of that. Uh, so if this game is going to offer those two things and also follow the same structure of content updates that Monster Hunter is, all I'm going to say is the hunting game genre is looking very healthy. Um, so either way, that's going to wrap things up for me. Um, I know there's like a EA, EA trial or EA play or something where you get to like play the game for 10 hours. So if you can, I'd suggest just trying that out. But like I said, I'm having an absolute blast with this. I plan on streaming this game all damn week. So... Let me know. What do you guys think? Is this going to stack up against Monster Hunter? Is the uh, the behemoth of the hunting industry finally going to have some competition? I think it is, but I guess time will tell. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time.